Hello everybody and today I'm going to be talking about being transgender online. So before we actually start, I want to just shout out to my gaming channel, click it on the screen right now, the big green box, and hit that subscribe button, then come back to this video. Okay, you've clicked the box, okay, you are subscribed, okay, let's jump straight into the actual video. So, as you now know, I have a gaming channel, I've had this gaming channel for a few months now, and I upload videos of Minecraft, Star Wars, Need for Speed, videos like that, and games like actual video games you're probably wondering a person like me playing video games how is, how why would i do that i'm such a known person for just being so mature and professional and proper but really i am just a kid so video games are part of my life and growing up so why am i doing a video talking about video games and online stuff well are you ready for this video? Because I'm guessing you are. Being transgender and online and video games and knowing gaming communities, it's very difficult. Now, if I quickly just not be here. And I start talking, you would think that I sound like a boy. If you can't see the person who is transgender and online, you just assume by their voice that they are male or female. Now, I've had a few friends in the past years of my life who I've Skyped with, who I've used TeamSpeak to connect with, uh, the FaceTime, that's another one, yeah. But if you don't see them, they could be a completely different gender than you were to assume. On my game channel, I get the odd comment of a death threat or a transphobic comment from someone who just comes across my videos or knows me and just wants to target me in a hole. My gaming channel is kind of vulnerable as it's not very big, it's not the most popular channel, it's only got like 75 subscribers. The dislikes affect the videos coming up and the haters can impact it a lot. So that's why I did do a shout out at the beginning of this video to my gaming channel to make it grow bigger so there's more likes and stuff and you guys to know where I am if you don't see me on a daily basis. Yay. I should have got a drink before starting this video. My voice is like going, uh. Being online and doing that kind of stuff and talking to gaming communities is a very difficult because they always, always, always assume by your voice that you're either a male or a female. However, I recently was in a video by a very famous gaming YouTuber who has 75,000 subscribers and they always referred to me as they. All the comments in that video complained saying, why did you call this person they? They're like, they can't be a, a singular person. They means more than one person. And I, I was reading through these comments, there was hundreds of comments saying they question mark how many people were playing on that account question mark and comments like this now i'm not going to go on the whole thing about they as being a singular word and used for a singular pronoun but this youtuber knew that i was trans but didn't know what pronouns to use so they used they trying to be as polite as they can be without assuming any gender to me. You're probably wondering why pronouns online affect me personally so much and other trans people in the gaming community. Well, if I came out as trans, for example, like if I didn't already come out as trans, if I suddenly say to all my gaming friends, hey, I want to be referred as she, and some of them are going to be like, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Question mark. Now, I'm going to show a few Skype conversations, but I'm going to blur out their names and stuff. And a few of these are going to be displayed now. Uh, 
as you can see, a few people there were asking a lot of questions, and I was just like, yes, it's all okay, just, just go along with it, <laughs> kind of thing, because I don't know some of the people that I have on TeamSpeak or Skype. Some of them I've had connections by friends and friends and friends of friends. Or you get the idea. Some of them I don't know personally. So this makes it very confusing for them, not knowing me and coming out as transgender and coming out as MTF was a big step on the gaming community for me. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't start a gaming channel before I started this channel. And one of them was to see how my gaming friends would react. I'm pleased to say many of them were fully accepting and I only lost about three or four of them, which was really good as I have been friends with these people for my entire teenagehood and pre-teenagehood. So it's been a wild journey for me on the gaming communities out there. And that's why it took me so long to start up a gaming channel. However, a long time ago, in I think it was about February, I think it was February 2012, that's when my gaming started on YouTube. I had a channel, which we won't reference because those videos are cringy. Hello guys, it's me again, and I'm, what kit should I be? Oh, make people like Thor, so I think Thor would be quite good in this massive and I've done my first ever video, which was a Minecraft video, on this channel. You can check that out. It's done. Don't go there. Just, just no. So, more on to the online stuff about being trans. What are the issues about being trans online? You're probably thinking, with my following, I get comments and likes and all my publicity is going to be huge and get tons of this stuff. Now, I've got all my social medias down in the description below. You can check them all out. They're there in every video. And I've got Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat. They're all there. All of them. All my social medias are down below. So, Instagram, for example, is my biggest social media. I've got 14,700 followers on Instagram. On average, I get 100 to 300 likes per post. How many comments do I get on average? I get zero comments on average. Why is this? Because I delete all the hate comments. Every hate comment I get, I delete. I read through and I delete it. Why do I do this? Because I don't want it to be on my profile. I don't want other people to see that I get abused and the main reason was, once upon a time, someone had a go at me on Twitter. They got backslashed hugely. All my followers started having a go at this one person. I felt really bad that this one person was again getting targeted by my followers. And I don't want that to happen to other people out there. However, I do allow people that I know comments onto my post. So if I'm following you, you're allowed to comment on my posts. Anyone's allowed to comment. If I'm following you, your, your comment stays there. So that makes it then kind of thing. You're probably wondering, I follow you about 300 people. How come they don't all comment on my posts? A lot of my friends in real life hate me. I am really lonely in real life. A lot of people dislike me and just really don't even want to know me kind of thing. But we won't cover that in this video. We're talking about online stuff. So comments on my posts on all my social media get deleted if it has any hate in it at all. The only comments I allow are people that I know. What is this? What is this hairstyle? What is this hairstyle? Why did I do that? I don't know. So what are the main reasons that make it difficult for being transgender and online. The number one hardest thing about being transgender online is the hate. I get all these messages from video games, YouTube, Facebook, so on, all my medias and everything. I always get about 20 hate comments on everything I post. It's the reason why my videos get disliked because the content is okay. 
not the best video. I know my videos aren't the best. But because there's hate out there, I'm always going to get dislikes or bad negative comments that I have to go through and delete. The reason I read all my hate messages is so I can reflect on it and try, try to improve. If it's for like a message saying, go kill yourself, I'm like, I'm deleting that person and they're getting blocked. So number two for why it's really difficult for trans people online is because of their voice. Now voices can be very misleading as I've already said and proven but without the whole concept and the whole image of a person you don't really know what gender they are. They could be a boy pre-puberty who has a really squeaky voice and they could get mistaken for being a girl. They could be a girl with a very deep voice and get mistaken for a boy. That's just a few examples of voices online. And the third thing that makes it really difficult for transgender people online is if you've had friends before coming out. Just so happens that I had a few friends that I didn't really know that well, that I lost contact and they started asking tons of questions when everyone else started talking about it. Because online, things go viral so quick. But having friends before coming out is hard in real life but even harder online so that's it for this week's video i know it hasn't been the best video it's kind of been a bit of a rant video i know about that kind of stuff but i do hope you have enjoyed the video and a few updates is that on my game channel which you can still click right now yeah click it click it click it click it click it click it click it. I am going to be starting some of the old series again and stuff so make sure you do subscribe because there's tons of videos all pre-uploaded now till September the 1st. My, my, my camera cut out. How inconsiderate. How inconsiderate. But on that note, thank you guys for watching me. So remember, as always, like, comment, you subscribe see you guys in the next video good bye